So Corey, you literally joined us as we were talking about stagnant music scene being changed by bands coming through from the underground. Is that something yeah. that is that something that you feel as well as a possibility? I think that's the way it's always been, man. Yeah, absolutely. Like the, the good bands rise to the top from the underground and slowly but surely kind of they start to make up what is known as the mainstream, you know, especially with metal and stuff. I mean, we were certainly underground when oh, yeah. Easter came up, you guys, Corn, same way. I mean, it's always... They look at, at us as like gateway bands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Lamb yeah. of God is a gateway band yeah. to the real underground. <laughs> but, it's, but it's weird because you can, it's, it's great, like bands like you guys, Hatebreed, have one foot in both, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So they can enjoy the success of it, but it doesn't become overpopulated. Like it's weird. Like there are certain bands that collapse under the weight of all the expectations that are kind of put on them instead of being allowed to kind of grow into what they want to be, you know? And for me, that's what metal's supposed to be, you know? So I, I feel like we kind of have the best of all those worlds where we have always just kind of done our thing. We still have that underground life. Yeah. And yet we've we've been able to kind of reach into that mainstream area and take what was what we wanted, you know. Like something. Sex pistols. Yeah. Like, exactly. Uh, 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 so, something that I wanted to talk to you guys about was like people say this like a political climate changes mood musically, and I, I look back to like the mid '80s when Reagan was trying oh, to push yeah, everything yeah, back yeah. towards '50s America, and you got hardcore come out of that, and thrash come out of that, yeah. and even the last time that that music that our, our culture took over the mainstream was at the end of the new metal era, which was during, like when fucking Bush was, yeah. was in yes. power. Oh, yeah. Like, do you- Which I reminisce fondly about old GW oh, now, oh, compared God. to our guy now. Who would have thought? Good old George W. Bush. I miss that guy. He was a reasonable man. What the fuck? But do you feel like that pendulum could swing again? Oh, I think it is swinging like a fucking wrecking ball, dude. Oh, yeah. Are you yeah. kidding me? It's, I mean, like, it's definitely bringing out people's political, social consciousness. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to. It's yeah. got to, you know? But it's also, American politics is a, a farce of itself right now. It's oh, a parody yeah. of itself. It's, I mean, we have a guy who, uh, who, like, was in professional wrestling for our president. I mean, it's it's got to be, it's laughable. If it it's completely there. laughing. Yeah, you're great. Yeah, you want to know the true story about Trump, all you got to do is ask anyone from New York. Yeah. And they'll tell you exactly what Trump, because they've been living with his weirdness oh, yeah, yeah. for 30 years, you know? And the fact that he's he's bankrupted more companies than anyone even knows about, and yet all of these Trump heads voiced him up as the savior of America. It's like, you got you to be fucking kidding me. Jesus Christ. But we're the assholes. <laughs> So we were just, we were also just talking books. I know you've got a new book coming out. Like, yeah. I've just moved to the States. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Welcome to America! Right? I picked my moments, right? Have a Big Mac, motherfucker! <laughs> hey, you're lucky you got in. I know, I know. <laughs> Mate, tell did, me did, about did, it. Did they build the wall yet? No, not yet. Mate, we're building the, the Brexit wall. They are talking about making <laughs> slats in the wall got, so there's transparency. I'm like, make up your fucking mind. I dude. swear to the Lord above, I got my visa three days before he got inaugurated. Like, I love it. Like, I couldn't believe my luck. That's fucking But your funny. book is about, it's specifically about America and the things that people don't see. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of realms are you going into on the book? It's very socio-political. I mean, it, it's really cultural. It's about the seismic cut that has kind of happened right in the middle. It's essentially, it's a plea to everyone, trying to get them to come more to the middle, where we all naturally are. You were talking about that earlier. Exactly. And stop screaming at each other from the absolute extremes. You know? we, we, right. we were yeah. just yeah. talking about that before you got here. That. Gotta That's, meet in the middle. Exactly. And more people are in the middle than they realize, you know? I feel, for the most part, that most people are naturally socially liberal and yet fiscally conservative, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it's actually the best place to start because everyone thinks that way. It's only when the zealots and the talking heads get involved and they start spinning rhetoric like a fucking, you know, a bunch of bullshit at a fucking fair that it starts to get taken and, and spun out of control. So I think we need to listen less 
to the doomsayers and the uh, you know the the town criers and get more in touch and talk to each other and not and that comes from not yelling but listening you have to listen first i love that this is exactly this is exactly what randy was saying it goes to show that it's a it's a solid state from our from our yeah. world we all think of the you know, before this, I was in our dressing room, we were, and we were talking about, me and John were talking about the difference, and it, it, our media doesn't help. No. You look at CNN, it's saying one thing, and you look at Fox News, it's saying the other, yeah, think, yeah. and you look at these two different things, and their language is not objective journalism nope. anymore. No. It's one thing or the other. It's yep. agenda. And so people that look at Fox News as their primary news source, that's what they believe. People who look at CNN as their primary news source, that's what they believe. So yeah. I go on these horrible like comparison binges where I'll look up uh, CNN, NBC, Fox News, BBC, Al Jazeera, and just try and see if I can pick out of this diaphanous fog of bullshit some nugget of truth. Yeah. But it's really hard to find because everybody's the way, selling something. Ironically, if you want real, real deal journalism these days, newspapers. Yeah. Newspapers are still like to this day. They are so much more grounded and such more, so much not non-biased um, that you can you can kind of start to get a better picture of what's going on. However, that started to bleed into fucking print as well, it's where you have. It's always been that way, but newspapers are held to a higher form of subjection. They are they are held to a higher form of. Uh, scrutiny when it comes to stuff like that. Whereas TV, they passed a mandate in the Reagan era that kind of stripped away the uh, the, the the watchdog laws that went around with a lot of the uh, TV uh, like national news stuff. So it's easier for the national news to get away with being one way or the other. Whereas the newspapers are still held to that very strict standard of journalistic exactly. integrity. Exactly. Like I watched that movie Spotlight, and yeah. like like that made me feel like a lesser journalist. So I hear what you're saying when yeah. it comes to to print. Like we've been ending these interviews the same way every single time, where we're asking people about creating their own futures. Two people that have risen from the underground. What advice would you give to people about creating their own future? Creating their own future. That's a good one. I mean. Uh, I think definitely today, I think that's really, really important to create your own future, your own path in life, because nobody's coming to save you. No. no government official, no job, no business, no nothing. You have to decide what either A, is reasonable enough for you to tolerate to get you through the day to employ yourself, or you have to decide how much you're willing to suffer to do your own thing. Nothing comes for free. You know, as far as creating your own future, my advice would be just like, don't believe anybody that says they're going to solve your problems yeah. for you. I tell you what, this is what I've been telling people lately. If you want to start with your politics and try to really make a difference, start local. Local. Start on a state level. And Town because level. Most people just vote across the board. It doesn't matter. It's all party voting. It doesn't matter who the person is, what they stand for. They don't even look, except for when it comes to the president. The president has the most scrutiny, but they will vote down the party line no matter who those people are. That scrutiny has to start at a local level, at a state level, at a, you know, at one of those levels where even in the Senate, even in the House of Representatives, you have to start there. Who is representing you? Who is representing your real feelings, your real thoughts, your real needs? People don't put enough time or thought into it, except for professionals. Professionals don't give a fuck about us. So you have to start there and really find the people who you feel represent you and represent your men. You may be off, it may take some time, but you can get there. It just takes some time. Anything worth doing takes Absolutely. some time. Exactly. Corey, congratulations on the record. Good luck with oh, the book thanks, and man. the Slipknot movie. Randy, enjoy your time off, my you friend. You know it, brother. Blackcraft, create your own future with Corey and Randy.